Can you explain 1 Kings 22, 21 through 23 when talking about the lying spirits? And he's talking about the lying spirits that are sent by God. Okay, yeah. So this is a, a, a passage that a lot of Christians have problems with. They don't understand how this could work. So there's an evil king named Ahab. And uh, he really doesn't care for the Lord or the Lord's prophets. And uh, so he chooses a bunch of prophets for himself that tell him what he always wants to hear. But he also knows that the one who is the real prophet, Micaiah, never prophesies anything good concerning him. And it always comes to pass. So I think that's why he keeps him alive. It's just so that he can always actually hear what the Lord wants to say, just in case it's helpful. <laughs> but that being said... He summons all them, and they, and he wants to know, can I go to war? Will you, you know, de deliver my enemy into my hands? Blah blah blah. They all say, yeah, go up. The Lord blesses you, and then so then he calls Micaiah. So we pick up in verse 13, and the messengers who went to summon Micaiah said to him, behold, the words of the prophet with one accord are favorable to the king. Let your word be like the word of one of them, and speak favorably. So he's being encouraged by the king's servants to say good things to the king. But Micaiah said, as the Lord lives, what the Lord says to me, that I will speak. And when he had come to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall we refrain? And he answered him, go up and triumph. The Lord will give it into the hand of the king. He was being sarcastic and we can get that from the context of what said afterwards. But the king said to him, How many times shall I make you swear that you speak to me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? And he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each return to his home in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you he would not prophesy good concerning me but evil? <laughs> but And Micaiah said, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing beside him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said one thing and another said another. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord saying, I will entice him. And the Lord said to him, By what means? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. And he said, You are to entice him, and you shall succeed. Go out and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these your prophets. The Lord has declared disaster for you. Okay, so what's the concern? The concern is that God sent an angel to go lie. So is that dishonest? No. What we can understand is when we put this in context, also considering Job, where Satan is called before the Lord and has to give account, is that while there are evil forces, they still have to obey God when he decrees things. Yes, he allows them to rebel. Yes, he does allow them to do evil, but never beyond what is good for his people and for himself. So God is not causing them to be evil. He's not telling them to be evil, but he's using their evilness because ultimately they have to obey him. So while angels have a certain degree of free will, it's not total, it's not absolute. This is why demons have to flee from bodies when they're cast out in the name of Christ. And this is also how every creature that's ever been created, whether angel or human or whatever, will be judged at the end. They won't have a choice. There's no running away to be done. And just remember my two favorite verses. Lamentations 3.38 says, Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that both woe and well-being proceed? Both good and bad things are ordained by the Lord. But when you put it in conjunction with Romans 8.28, that we know all, good, all things work to the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose, then we can know that even when God allows or dictates for bad things to happen, it's for our good because we love him.